Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who is present, who gives life, who calls into existence the things that do not exist. Amen. If, if you were to keep watch over sins, O Lord, who could stand? Yet with you is forgiveness, and so we confess. Gracious God, have mercy, mercy on us. We, we confess that we have turned away from you knowingly. We have wandered from your resurrection life. We have strayed from your love for all people. Turn us back to you, O God. Give us new hearts and right spirits, that we may find what is pleasing to you and dwell in your house forever. Amen. Receive good news. God turns you to, to you in love. I will put my spirit in you, and you shall live, says our God. All your sin is forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, who is the free and abounding gift of God's grace for you. Amen. We'll sing together our gathering hymn, Beautiful Savior.
Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. Bend, Bend your, your ear to our, our prayers, Lord Christ, and, and come among us. us. By your gracious life and a death for us, bring light into the darkness of our hearts and anoint us with your Spirit. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our first reading today comes to us from the book of 1 Samuel, the 16th chapter. The Lord said to Samuel, how long will you grieve over Saul? I have rejected him from being king over Israel. Fill your horn with oil and set out. I will send you to Jesse the Bethlehemite, for I have provided for myself a king among his sons. Samuel said, How can I go? If Saul hears of it, he will kill me. And the Lord said, Take a heifer with you and say, I have come to sacrifice to the Lord. Invite Jesse to sacrifice, and I will show you what you shall do. And you shall anoint for me the one whom I name to you. Samuel did what the Lord commanded and came to Bethlehem. The elders of the city came to meet him, trembling, and said, Do you come peaceably? He said, Peaceably. I have come to sacrifice to the Lord. Sanctify yourselves and come with me to the sacrifice. And he sanctified Jesse and his sons and invited them to the sacrifice. When they came, he looked at Elip and thought, Surely the Lord's anointed is now before the Lord. The Lord said to Samuel, Do not look on his appearance or the height of his stature, because I have rejected him. For the Lord does not see as mortals see. They look on the outward appearance, but the Lord looks in the heart. Then Jesse called Abinadab and made him pass before Samuel. He said, Neither has the Lord chosen this one. Then Jesse made Shema pass by, and he said, Neither has the Lord chosen this one. Jesse made seven of his sons pass before Samuel, and Samuel said to Jesse, The Lord has not chosen any of these. Samuel said to Jesse, Are all your sons here? And he said, there remains yet the youngest, but he is keeping the sheep. And Samuel said to Jesse, Send and bring him, for we will not sit down until he comes here. He sent and brought him in. Now he was ruddy and beautiful, and beautiful eyes and was handsome. The Lord said, Rise and anoint him, for this is the one. Then Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the presence of his brothers and the Spirit of the Lord came mightily upon David from that day forward. Samuel then set out and went to Ramah. Our psalm is Psalm 23. We will read it responsibly. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not be in want. The Lord makes me lie down in green pastures and leads me beside still waters. You restore my soul, O Lord, and guide me along right pathways for your name's sake. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, and my cup is running over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Our next reading comes to us from Paul's letter to the Ephesians, the fifth chapter, beginning with the eighth verse. For once you were darkness, but now in the Lord you are light. Live as children of the light, for the fruit of the light is found in all that is good and right and true. Try to find out what is pleasing to the Lord. Take no part in the unfruitful works of darkness, but instead expose them for it is shameful even to mention what such people do secretly. But everything exposed by the light becomes visible, for everything that becomes visible is light. Therefore it says, Sleeper, awake, rise from the dead, and Christ will shine on you. Here ends our reading. to the scene of your word. 
Neither this man nor his parents sinned. He was born blind so that God's works might be revealed in him. We must work the works of him who sent me well at his day. Night is coming when no one can work. As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. And when he had said this, he spat on the ground. He made mud with the saliva and spread the mud on the man's eyes, saying to him, Go wash in the pool of Siloam, which means scent. Then he went and washed and came back, able to see. The neighbors and those who had seen him before as a beggar began to ask, Is this not the man who used to sit and beg? And some were saying, It is he. Others were saying, No, but it is someone like him. And he kept saying, I am the man. But they kept asking him, then how were your eyes opened? He answered, The man called Jesus made mud, spread it on my eyes, and said to me, Go to Siloam and wash. I went and washed and received my sight. They said to him, Where is he? He said, I do not know. They brought to the Pharisees the man who had formerly been blind. Now it was a Sabbath day when Jesus made the mud and opened his eyes. Then the Pharisees also began to ask him how he had received his sight. He said to them, He put mud on my eyes, then I washed, and now I see. Some of the Pharisees said, This man is not from God, for he does not observe the Sabbath. But others said, How can a man who is a sinner perform such signs? And they were divided. So they said again to the blind man, What do you say about him? It was your eyes he opened, and he said, He is a prophet. The Jews did not believe that he had been blind and had received his sight until they called the parents of the man who had received his sight. And they asked them, Is this your son, who you say was born blind? How then does he now see? And his parents answered, We know that this is our son, and that he was born blind. But we do not know how it is that he now sees, nor do we know who opened his eyes. Ask him, for he is of age. He will speak for himself. His parents said this because they were afraid of the Jews, for the Jews had already agreed that anyone who confessed Jesus to be the Messiah would be put out of the synagogue. Therefore his parents said, He is of age, ask him. So for the second time they called the man who had been blind, and they said to him, Give glory to God. We know that this man is a sinner. He said, he answered, I do not know whether he is a sinner. One thing I do know, that though I was blind, now I see. And they said to him, What did he do to you? How did he open your eyes? And he answered them, I have told you already, and you would not listen. Why would you want to hear it again? Do you also want to become his disciples? Then they reviled him, saying, You are a disciple, but we are disciples of Moses. We know that God has spoken to Moses, but as for this man, we do not know where he comes from. Then the man answered, Well, here is an astonishing thing. You do not know where he comes from, and yet he opened my eyes. We know that God does not listen to sinners, but he does listen to one who worships him and obeys his will. 
Never since the world began has it been heard of that anyone opened the eyes of a person born blind. If this man were not from God, he could do nothing. They answered him, You were born entirely in sins, and are you trying to teach us? And so they drove him out. Jesus then heard that they had driven him out, and when he found him, he said, Do you believe in the Son of Man? He answered, And who is he, sir? Tell me, so that I may believe in him. Jesus said to him, You have seen him, and the one speaking with you is he. He then said, Lord, I believe. And he worshipped him. Jesus said, I came into this world for judgment so that those who do not see may see, and those who do see may become blind. And some of the Pharisees near him heard this, and they said to him, Surely we are not blind, are we? And Jesus said to them, If you were blind, you would not have sinned. But now that you say we see, your sin remains. This is the Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Well, again, grace and peace to you from God, our Father, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit who opens our eyes when we are blind. Amen. Preparing to preach this sermon, one question that kept coming up was, has Christ opened our eyes to see? Considering all that's happened this week, that is a big question. So I ask you, again, thinking about this past week, what have your eyes been opened to see? You may hear this question and wonder, well, what do you mean? I am not blind. I know I have said the same thing, but I am realizing more ways that I have been blind, partly due to what I now see. For example, and just to have a few for there are certainly numerous ways, I now see how many important services and activities are connected to our schools and the education. We get Again, it's so much more easy now to see all the things that people get, um, their needs and their wants and their desires um, are met. They appreciate the gifts of the school system that it brings across our country. Uh, we realize that we do miss the connection of each other, of sports, of meals, of constructive and fun time together. I also see how much I miss just going to a restaurant, just sitting down to enjoy a meal prepared by gifted people to enjoy time with my wife or friends or others uh, closer than six feet away. I now see how many businesses are just affected by closings and how much we are connected. I see the stress and the difficulty around um, this medical awareness and those that are sick and how many people are affected across our world. Now I see again an infection that is invisible to us, a virus that has brought in pandemic form uh, a medical system in our country and in other places to the breaking point, to a capacity uh, where it's hard to know if we can continue to care for people. Certainly all of these senses of blindness that I recognize now that I can see uh, maybe is in a way that I have recognized that I have taken things for granted in life, in the community that we live in, and in other ways. I realize as well, too, I'm not sure about you, but maybe you've also seen and heard the stories of how this global coordinated effort to limit travel, to um, you know, socially isolate and, and have these distances, to stop non-essential activities and services, have left the skies in China clear and blue, the waters in Venice, Italy, clean and vibrant with life again. Um, I, interestingly see how a Sabbath from the work of our lives across the globe that causes maybe more pollution than we realized has an impact. Altogether, though, I'm not sure that I know really what to do with all of this that I now see. And I think that's part of the link to our gospel scripture today. It seems just about everyone in John's gospel reading had questions to ask. And the disciples started by asking Jesus, who sinned that this man was born blind? Was it him or was it his parents? Those seem like two obvious 
uh, reasons and sources for the blindness to them. But Jesus replies, neither this man nor his parents sinned. He was born this way that God's work might be revealed in him. Now this seems to be a strange answer, at least to me. And I wonder, can it even be true if I don't understand it or see how God's work might be revealed in someone who seems to have had an unfortunate place in life? But I think the direction that Jesus is taking us is to ask, how is God being revealed in each of us? What is our potential to witness to who God is in our lives? Whatever ways that we see we have blessings and benefits or maybe disadvantages or challenges. Is God a living and active part of who we are and how we live? In this way, then, I think considering what we are born with or what we may consider that we are missing from birth is not to be taken for granted, but maybe to be understood more as an opportunity, a gift, and a responsibility. This can be a reminder to remember blessings and see potentials and possibilities in all areas. Our limitations may feel like a curse, but maybe Jesus has another plan. Jesus, the one that comes certainly to forgive sins and address the question that his disciples and Pharisees are asking. Maybe just not the way they were expecting. So can we wonder together how we are born blind and maybe how Jesus, the light of the world, is coming to us so that God's healing work might be revealed in us and in our communities? So I ask again too, where have you seen this happening this week? There is also a camp song that I'm reminded of that I learned years ago called Blind Man. I know there's different versions and verses to this song, um, but today what I appreciate about it and the memory that I have of it is that it connects these stories that we've heard and one more that we will hear in the Gospel of John during Lent, the stories of the blind man, the woman at the well, and Lazarus, who was raised from the dead. The lyrics also name the suffering uh, and experience of the people in the story and offers us the hope of Jesus. In that song, Blind Man, uh, the lyrics go that the blind man stood by the road and he cried, show me the way to go home. The woman sat by the well and she cried, show me the truth. Lazarus laid in the grave, and they all cried, Show us the life. Then Jesus stood by the road and he cried. Jesus sat by the well and he cried. Jesus laid in the grave and he cried, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Come follow me home. Jesus meets us in all of these places and more where we suffer, where we cry out, and God comes to be with us, to know the suffering that we experience. There's that sense of blindness and sight, and that image also comes to us in the other scriptures we read. The image of blindness, like when the Lord chooses David as king for Samuel to anoint, and even God's prophet Samuel didn't see what God was looking for. The seemingly obvious choice for Samuel for king was the oldest, the tallest, the strongest son, yet God chose differently. In the 23rd Psalm, the blindness image of walking through the darkest valley or the valley of death may be relatable right now. Going through something unforeseen, unfamiliar, or scary, it's certainly hard not to be afraid. Through faith and trusting in God, the psalmist reminds us that God has been faithful in the past, leading us beside still waters and to clean and green pastures, and proclaims no fear of evil, knowing the protection and comfort that God brings. To the Ephesians, Paul writes, Once you were darkness, but now, in the Lord you are light. Live as children of the light. Know that you see what is good and right and true, and now do it and follow in that way. And it's this scripture as well that especially reminds me of the hymn that we're about to sing, Amazing Grace. For John Newton wrote the words as an Englishman in the slave trade. It was one time that he was returning to England on a ship, and a fierce storm hit and almost sank his ship. He is said to have begun his spiritual journey at that time, crying out to God to save them from the storm. Yet after surviving the event, he became a slave ship master for several years. And then it was only a few years after that that he became terribly ill on a voyage and left the trade altogether 
and devoted more of his life to God and actually became a priest in the Anglican Church. Through those years, and more devoted to, to God, he still carried the horrors of the slave trade with him, realizing the guilt of his own inhumane behavior and seeing the system of power and money and violence it all supported with new and open eyes. John Newton then as a priest joined forces with William Wilberforce of the English Parliament in the effort to abolish the African slave trade. That's the time as he was pinning the words from the song, I once was lost, but now I'm found, was blind, but now I see. There are so many ways that God comes to us and connects to us through uh, this time, even in our isolation, even in our distancing, but it's not that we are alone. It's to know that God is with us in the music, in our friends, in our family. Even if we've had maybe a little too much time together in close quarters, we just know that God has blessed us in many, in many ways, and we look for the time that we can be together again. So again, I conclude with the big question that we had at the beginning. What have our eyes been opened to see? May we go into this coming week with God through Jesus Christ, showing us the way, the truth, and the life, our way to go home. Amen. Amen. Again, we come to a time of prayer and each petition 
will end with, Hear us, O God, our response is, Your mercy is great. Turning our hearts to God, who is gracious and merciful, we pray for the Church, the world, and all who are in need. God of insight, open the hearts of the Church and the world to all who testify to your deeds of power. Raise up voices in your Church that are often silenced or overlooked due to age, gender, race, economic status, or other expression. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. God of insight, empower us to care for the land and all living things that dwell in it and beneath it. Provide rich soil for crops to grow, bring rain to land suffering drought, protect hills and shorelines from damage caused by erosion. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. God of insight, bring peace to all people and nations. Anoint leaders who seek goodness, righteousness, and truth on behalf of all. Frustrate the efforts of those who would seek to cause violence or terror. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. God of insight, you care for our needs even before we ask. Come quickly to all who seek prayer this day. Especially we lift up Ryan, Wendy, Ruby, Paul, Lisa, Oral, Russ, Pete, Karen, Susan, Pearl, Barry, Robert, Jillian, Ellen, Keely, Todd, all those dealing with coronavirus, whether they be ill or in the test phase, and especially for our medical community that is taking care of them. Accomplish healing through the work of doctors, nurses, physical therapists, nutritionists, and all who tend to human bodies. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. God of insight, help this assembly, whether near or far, lift up the unique gifts of each person who enters and is part of it, no matter their physical capacity, their cognitive ability, or their sensory need. Help us to be creative and brave in making our facilities and our ministries accessible to all. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. God of insight, you call out to those who are asleep and awaken them to new life with you. We give thanks for your saints. Join us together with them as your children in this world and the next. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Gracious God, we continue to lift up this community, its mission and ministry for your will in the world. And today, again, we lift up our members, Scott and Wendy, Austin, Carter, Paris, Justin, Elaine, Emily, Jordan, Peyton, Dean, Sharon, Beverly, Sharon, and Jacob. Be with them again this week and in the time to come that your blessing may be known and seen and revealed through them. Lord, or hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. And according to your steadfast love, O God, hear these in all of our prayers as we commend them to you through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you. And also with you. Uh, share peace. Hi. 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 Yeah. yeah. Virtually, you're here and there. Call so, somebody and say peace. peace be with you. Peace be with you. We will continue with our Thanksgiving uh, part of the service. Let us pray. Praise and thanks to you, holy God, for by your word you made all things, you spoke life into darkness, called forth beauty from chaos, and brought life into being. For you are life, O God. We give you thanks and praise. By your word you called your people Israel to tell of your wonderful gifts freedom from captivity, water on the desert journey, a pathway home from exile, wisdom for life with you. For your word of life, O God, we give you thanks and praise. Through Jesus, your word made flesh, you speak to us and call us to witness forgiveness through the cross, life to those entombed by death, the way of your self-giving love. For your word of life, O God, we give you thanks and praise. Send your spirit of truth, O God, and rekindle your gifts within us. 
Renew our faith, increase our hope, and deepen our love for the sake of a world in need. Faithful to your word, O God, draw near to all who call on you, through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory forever. Amen. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our, our Father, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Everyone can be seated, right? If yeah. they've been standing this whole time, yeah, everyone's been standing you, you this just, whole time. It's just crazy. Have a seat there. So um, we have some announcements, um, and well, the first one is this: we're we're taping this on Friday night, okay? And so thanks thanks to Colleen for coming in and playing for us tonight, and also thanks to Evan uh, for coming in and videotaping this. Uh, and so it's your birthday tomorrow but since this is sunday it was yesterday but we're still going to sing to you really quick okay. happy birthday to you happy birthday to you happy birthday dear keith happy birthday to you thank you thank you yes yeah, and, and hope, tomorrow. yeah I, I hope you have a great great time uh, if you received my email that I sent out to everybody, uh, the council met via text uh, on Thursday night. Uh, we have decided that the building will be closed uh, indefinitely. Uh, we don't know when uh, we're going to open up our building. We'll continue to work on taping these services to have them uh, for you so that we can be community together. Uh, please share them with people. Uh, that uh, that we can still be the people of Martins, we can still be the body of Christ, even though we may not be physically present with one another. Uh, it's a it's a super super big deal. Uh, I put in my email that if you would like to see uh, receive or be able to uh, to do some home devotionals uh, for you yourself uh, as a family uh, for your kids, uh, if you want a group of people to come together to watch a. a a Bible study series, uh, please contact us. We will give you access to Right Now Media, uh, which uh, the church purchased, and all of our members have uh, can have access to that, uh, to use that uh, for the days ahead. So please, uh, please do that, because uh, we would love to share that resource. Um, uh, thanks to Pastor Keith for putting uh, all of this stuff together. Uh, and if you need us, uh, please call. Uh, my cell phone number is 701-789-1857, um, and uh, Pastor Keith? Yeah, you can call me 701-335-6213. Uh, uh, and, uh, and, and we would love to talk to you over the phone. Uh, if it's safe, we would love to schedule a visit with you, if that's what, something that you would uh, that you would need. Uh, because I will tell you, th this, is, uh, this, this is, is super, hard. This is super hard for me uh, to not come together uh, as as the church uh, and worship in person together uh, in this social distancing thing. I'm used to having all of you around. Uh, we want to make a promise to our kids that that are, are excited. I know they are about First Communion. Uh, and even though we may have social distancing for a while, as soon as we are able to do so, we will have a First Communion class. We will schedule how we do a First Communion service, whether that's on a, on a Sunday morning piece where we create a special service for you and your families to come and gather around that, that special time uh, in your life to receive, uh, to receive this gift. Uh, it's going to be pretty special. Yeah. Absolutely, that, uh, that we've been given. And I, I really appreciate your sermon uh, today uh, to, to what is it that we see? Uh, in, in all reality during this time and, and to give thanks for uh, because uh, again uh, preaching to an empty sanctuary uh, leading worship in an empty sanctuary uh, it, 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 it is a huge reminder uh, of the love for our brothers and sisters in Martins 
uh, and the community that surrounds us. I think if I squint hard, I think I can see some people through there, through that little, that little camera. Yeah, maybe. And well, if you remember, uh, was it you that taught us how to show the peach like a like a, a like a dinosaur? I mean, so we could do that. That's social distancing uh, at its uh, at its finest. Uh, and also a reminder: um, if uh, if you can, uh, please uh, mail in your offering. Uh, or go online uh, and set it up uh, as a payment and, and to continue to make your payments towards the uh, towards the new building process. Uh, and uh, if you have any questions about those numbers and, and where we're at, you can always call us uh, at the church. Uh, we would love we would love to hear from you. But again, a reminder: as of now, our building is completely locked down until further notice, and all activities. Uh, other than the staff and the people that we bring in to uh, to tape a service, uh, the building will be closed uh, unless we schedule a meeting with you or somebody else. I we're very sorry for that inconvenience, but know you're loved and that we continue to pray for you. And, and I know I had a question actually, somebody uh, was asking online too, like could they coordinate if they've been putting together like this personal care kit for Lutheran World Relief or something, could they coordinate and try to drop it off? It's like, I think so, that's still possible at this time. Um, so just contact us at the office, coordinate a time, we can kind of come and lock the door um, for different things like that. So I know there's still some awesome things that people are doing um, in our community and ways that they still want to be involved here, so we're going to do what we can. Absolutely. Yeah, please make arrangements for us. Uh, since I can't ask anybody if there's any other announcements, uh, Pastor Keith, if you'll give us our blessing as we go. So go with this blessing. Now is the acceptable time. Now is the day of salvation. Holy God, speaking, spoken, and inspiring, bless you, unbind you, and send you in love and in peace. Amen. Go in peace. Share the good news. Thanks be to God.